welcome back to the second video in this course on Scrintle. Today we're going to be talking about the content options that you have inside of Scrintle cards, the main unit of knowledge inside of the application, as well as some of the new features. Tasks are here! So inside of Scrintle cards you can add a variety of different pieces of media. For instance, if I create a new card here and I give it a uh, hello YouTube and content card title. Now we're ready to start adding media to this card, whether it be content, thoughts, ideas, but the actual media, embeddable media, what can we put in here? Well, you got several options such as YouTube videos. So if we want to add a YouTube video, you can do a slash command, start typing YouTube, paste the link you want, and you can add an embedded YouTube video, which you could actually watch in here and then take notes on in that exact same card. So that's already handy, and again, easier than doing this through plain text embedding an iframe or however you're doing it, it just, there's the YouTube video, bam, right off the bat. The next thing you could also add is media files. So we could add a file and we could upload any kind of file, whether it be a PDF or otherwise, or a, a Word file, let's, let's just do that. Um, let me grab a file over here. And we could drag and drop, say, a Microsoft Word file. Bam. And there you go. Now you have this Word file. But you could also do the same to PDFs, which is a standard option. And then we also have the ability to upload images. Uh, I don't have any images on hand, but there you go. Actually, yes, I do. One second. So we can go over here and, yeah, why don't we just do that? And there's an image. So easily, I've already added a video, a file, an image, and what's also cool is that video that I've loaded also goes to the links pane. So that's super handy. And if I remember correctly, we might be able to see, yep, yeah, well, we'll be able to see in here, but not the broken links, but yes, you can add all different kinds of media to your individual cards, which is very handy and very fast. Now I made this a little bit bigger for us, so it's easier to see, but what else we can add to these cards includes, you know, just our normal content. Hello world. Oh, wow. I cannot spell at all today. Hello world. But you can also add specific pieces of information such as tags. So we could add a hashtag and then I could add any sort of tag that I want that I've defined already. And those are all going to appear in the tags area that I talked about in the last video. But now there's also been some new releases. There are now tasks. So if I add a slash task and create a task list, list item one, item 1.1, and then item two, item three. And so now I have these task items. That is okay, cool. But when we go to the tasks pane to look at them, we can see that there are actual uh, groupings of the card where the tasks are it tells us there's four tasks here. It shows us those tasks themselves. If I start checking these off, you see this little progress bar starts going going up. We got only two left, and we have a meta view over the entire collection of how many are completed, not completed, total count. So right off the bat, pretty awesome for what's you know new. This is a new feature, but we can also filter it by tags, by users, by dates. So that becomes immensely handy for doing task management inside of your cards for when you're trying to deal with new content and you want to check off the content that you reviewed. This is a great way of doing that. Now, moving on, we also already saw the capability of posting links. So now we can actually paste a link such as google.com and then it will appear in the links pane. And we can also go and see the macro overview of all links in the entire content system and go to web links and we'll see them there. So that's links. And then we can also look at backlinks and any sort of adjacent content. So if I did a, uh, a link to insert a card board or just a link, we can actually do this. So we can do it with a plus sign and we could say, uh, we could link a card or we could link a board. And unfortunately, the board is not working, or maybe I'm doing it incorrectly, because when you type insert card, board, or link, I'm not seeing the boards pop up here. So, might be a bug to report. 
But moving on. So next we also have uh, the backlinks, which now is generated because I've attached this card. So we can see it appears on, but also it links to uh, the actual card itself here in the links. And if we went to this card, we could see that the backlinks at the bottom is this card. So we have these pieces of content automatically added as just meta information, metadata, on the actual cards themselves. You don't have to do any of that specifically yourself. It's just by linking to that particular card by name, you now have these links built between the different cards that go back and forth to each other. So you can get all this meta information, all the metadata for a card at the bottom. You get the links, it appears on this particular board, and you can even expand it and see all the cards on that board, but any board that it appears on, and any of the tags. Haha, <laughs> figured out the board. You can't link to the one that it's on. So if I actually did this and said, there it is. So we could also link to the boards just by doing it uh, for a board that it's not currently on. So, haha. And now we're gonna get a little bit more into the actual code formatting itself. Well, code, content, etc. So one of my favorite things about like Markdown and plain text is the code fences because you can easily see what type of language you're looking at. Now in Sprintle it's a little bit different. You can do inline code by just doing the normal backticks. In line code, add a backtick, and now that's inline code. Now for code blocks, it's a little different. So instead of doing the triple backticks, you can actually um, highlight some code and you can say, you know, print, hello world, and then select all of that. And then you can turn it into like this code block sort of thing, in which case you, know, you get more space to write stuff. Um, eh, I wish it would, you still had the, the, the triple backtick fenced off block area, but you, you can take what you can get. And then we also have um, LaTeX and auto ligatures. Now, what do I mean by auto ligatures before we get to LaTeX? So what I'm gonna type is a bang and an equal sign. Oh, you can see it there. So if I actually add the code fence first, and then leave it and then come back in and add the bang, you can see it's actually listed as plain text here. But if I just outside of that code fence or that little fenced area, do a bang equal sign, it turns into what we call a ligature. Now it's really hard to see. Uh, I don't know if I can make it much bigger. Yeah, sorry. But it's uh, an equal sign with a slash through it. So these are what are called ligatures. So the combination of two symbols, uh, so the exclamation point and the equal sign to a common meaning. And this is something that you can do quite regularly. Um, I'm not sure like, what all the combinations they might have are in here. Uh, it, it depends, but the not equals is a common one. So there are ligatures, which is handy for formatting if you're used to it. Otherwise, people might think you're just inserting a random text character. And then finally, we have LaTeX. Now, the way we can do LaTeX is by starting off with a backsword slash, a dollar sign, and ending it with a dollar sign. Anything inside of this is going to be a LaTeX equation. So we could do backslash sum braces, backslash pi brace, and see our results, which is sum of pi. That's it. And now you can have these inline math equations inside of your content. And then also what we can do is if we take any sort of plain text content, this is a newest, uh, one of the latest additions, is that there is now also highlighting. So you can actually highlight your individual pieces of content where you prefer to. Now look at that card in Scrintle. Now that is a good card. We got tasks, we got links, we got embedded content. That's a good card. So I hope you enjoyed this second course video on Scrintle. There will be several more and stay tuned for the rest of them. Catch you in the next one. Thank you.